Right, a new day, a new species. I've already started a little bit. So this is Japanese red pine. I did have a, it's not too cold in here, it's all right. I just closed myself up in here. It's pretty cold outside though. So with these, this is the difference from the video I showed you yesterday. Pines are so easy. This is the ideal time to take them out. You'll see, their seeds always pop up with the needles, with their first little seed needles. They come up above the soil. And then once the seeds come off, that's like the, the ideal time. This is great, this is fine. Look, you can see, I don't know how well you can see this, but this one, one of the needles has already popped out. I can literally just grab that, it's off. But it's a good indicator to take them out because they should all have, well they do, I know now, they, they should all have tap roots and that's it, nothing more. Leave them in for a few more weeks and they'll have more than tap roots and they'll start tangling up. But you'll see this is so much easier. Then those uh, Chinese junipers I was doing yesterday. And because they haven't been in this tray for a year, there isn't much going on on the topsoil. There's no moss, no liverwort, no weeds. It's just so much easier. Look at that. Easy. Just slides right out. So this one's a bit bigger. What's that in there? That's not a pine. That looks like a giant sequoia. I'll have a look at that one in a sec. Sometimes they, uh, I swear the seeds just jump from tray to tray. What is this? That could be a giant sequoia, or it could be a hinoki. I reckon that might be a hinoki. No. <coughs> it's annoying though, because if I don't know what it is, I'll have to put it aside. It could be hinoki. There's a big possibility. Yeah, well, you're gonna have to sit aside, mate. Um, <clears throat> you've seen all these Hinokis. I've already got through this tray, and there's just so many of them. Um, but yeah, these are so easy to pull out. Boom, done. I've started to put the, uh, the fertilizer, the uh, rooty powder, just on the deck there. So much easier, so I'll just do this and then just throw it in. <clears throat> but yeah, there's a uh, pines are so much easier. Like these have been in for six weeks. After about two weeks, depending on the time of year, you want to be doing it in spring though. You want to try and do it as naturally as possible, excluding the initial cold stratification stage. It's always good to use the fridge because you can't be reliant on the winters that we get. Though this year, 2021, we have had a hell of a winter. They would have been fine outside, but then again, you still have to protect them from rodents and birds. So it's less time to worry about that. You just have to worry about it when you take it out of the fridge and they start eating them after you've spent waiting two months for them to to um, cold strap fire. Bloody hate the mouse, the mice and the rats and that around here. But yeah, so take them all out. It's really easy. Like none of these have got anything but a tap root. It's, you just pull them straight out. So easy. Oh, oh, yep, got it. <laughs> there we go. This one. Don't know if you can see that. It's just about started to grow. A semi little root there. So what happened though is uh, <clears throat> it is a good idea to cut these tap roots down because what will normally happen is, especially in like little pots, one centimeter pots, the root will just keep with with pines. The root will just keep going. The tap root, and when it finally has nowhere to go that's when it'll spread out but we want to utilize all this pot um, so if we cut these down a bit let's move this out of the way if we cut the pines tap root down a bit like just cut it in half and then put it in obviously the roots it's been cut it's just going to start spreading it's going to start growing little horizontal bits and so it will spread out earlier and it will utilize more of the pot and it should grow more vigorously because of that because obviously the more root space a tree has the more vigorous it will grow this brings me on to bonsai actually so i grow all these i mean how i got into this let's go from the beginning how i got into this was uh, growing apple trees from seed i just 
one day just thought let's give it a go then I started growing citrus and then I started growing trees that needed coal stratifying this is about four years ago now and then I looked into bonsai I bought a few established bonsais before I started selling stuff but my interest with bonsai is the whole process is crap not just buying an established tree that someone else has worked on they've gone through all the different stages before it's got to you and all you're doing basically is maintaining it to me that's not bonsai you know I, I like what got my got me interested in interested in all of this is to watch the progress of a tree grow from seed to sapling to a more mature tree and then eventually if you want to because obviously you'll have to put them in big pots or in the ground to get that big fat trunk before you bonsai it you would have to ground grow them but um yeah i see a lot of people will buy saplings or what have you and it's not a good idea to just put them in a in a shallow pot they'll, they'll never grow you know you'll never get that big trunk the roots need room so i always recommend to people if they buy anything off me just put them in a 10 litre pot or bigger bigger the better <coughs> And just leave them alone give them a prune now and then trunk chop them build up that taper that trunk taper and then that's it don't worry too much about the branch in that yeah have an idea of what you want to keep and what you don't get rid of what you don't want but just leave the other bits alone until you start putting them in a training pot you know like a more shallow pot but not quite a bonsai pot and then you need to start worrying once you've got that trunk the, once you've got the shape of the trunk that's definitely when you need to start thinking about the branch and that. But for now, just let them grow out. You know, some people will get an idea way too soon of what they want to achieve out of that tree. But it's true that the tree will tell you what it what it's going to be best shaped as. You just have to work around the tree. You know, you, you won't be able to have every option with every tree regardless of species they'll just grow the way they want you can only manipulate it you can't tell it to do that to a certain extent you know but uh yeah um i'm more interested in as i said growing trees out putting them in big pots um not so much into bonsai but i do have loads of stuff that's grown in big pots that I'm going through that whole process and now I remember I've only been into this for four years so the, the, the first ones that will be ready from seed or from sapling would be the dorms because honestly they are ridiculously fast growing if, if you had so I sell dawn redwoods in nine centimeter pots and they're that one about that high at least that high um, and that's when they are at this time of year when they've got no foliage they would have dropped like half their size with the foliage. The fo a lot of the foliage just drops. But um, as soon as you stick that in a 10 litre pot, if you did it, say December, so the roots have a bit of time before spring, it could easily, with the pot, if the pot's say that tall, the tree could easily reach five, six foot in a year, in a whole growing season. It is crazy. They grow so quickly. And if you've seen some of my Dawn Redwood videos, um, you'll see cuttings are really, uh, really easy to take. I'll tell you what, let's take you on a little journey. So let's have a look at my Dawn Redwoods cuttings are doing. If I can get this off there. Alright, let me just take this off. I've got this little, it's been sitting on this, it's hooked up onto the frame there. It does a good job. So, this is everything I did. In the last few days, these are the Chinese junipers I did. As you can see, they're all doing well. I water the pots before I put them in, and then I won't water them for a while. I'll just leave them be. Obviously, depending if it's really hot, but it's been fine just now. The last thing you want to do is overwater them. <laughs> There's that one of the big roots still going. So what will normally happen is if they if they're gonna if they're not going to make the move, they'll show you straight away. It'll be like the next day. Here we go. Look. So this one here, but sometimes 
Like this one doesn't look like it's going to make it, but sometimes if you just push it down a little bit, it may actually um, survive. Sometimes I'll uh, I'll replace them with with new saplings. And what I'll do though, like this one here, this one probably won't survive. But if I do this, just lower it a little bit, so it can actually hold itself up a bit more, it'll probably survive. I, I see it time and time again. Because what I do, as I said, is I'll, I'll put a sapling right next to it. So you'll have two just growing next to each other. And again, this one. Any more like that? I think, oh no. Here we go, here's another one. Let's push it down a bit. And it'll probably, it'll probably be fine. Oh yeah, so I'm going to show you the Dawn Redwood cuttings. <clears throat> so many Hino keys. Oh, I've got to go out in the cold without my jacket. You right, chick chicks? <laughs> what are you doing? I have to get some mealworms for you, haven't I? Oh, here's an okey. So, the Dawn Redwood cones. You have to keep, this is like my wet polytunnel, you know. Anything that doesn't mind wet feet goes in here. Um, I've got Chinese elm, dawn redwood, um, European larch, I've still got Japanese larch in here. The Japanese larch, though, have got a bit more perlite in them, but these, they'll be fine. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't worry about that citrus tree, that's a long story. It was in the ground. Um, but you can see all the dawn redwoods are doing great, so... They look so small, these ones, now. If you saw these last year, well, it looks, say, what, summer? It was like three times the height, but they just dropped so much foliage. Like this bit here, look, that's that's dead. That's not doing anything. I don't know if you can see that. I just pulled it straight off, see? So if they're if the branching is this thick, um or or not as thick, you know, it'll just drop off. It has to be relatively thick for it. See this one just about survived. It's got a bit of, had a bud which broke. So that's that's still alive, that's fine. If you remember the Dawn Redwood video I did, and I took cuttings. So these are the these are the cuttings here. Let's just pull this out. And this is God. I can't even get the roots. I can hear them breaking. There we go. So there you go. That's goes to show that video I did last June. How you take Dawn Redwood cuttings in June. It's simple as that. But my my favourite time to take them is March. It's easier, you don't have to mess with the foliage, and there's a greater success rate. And as you can see here, pictures face, um, you can see pictures uh, tell a thousand words and all that. Look at this, it's ridiculous. I can't even see if any, I can't see any that haven't taken. I mean this one, the buds haven't quite broken yet, but it's probably still alive. They're doing really well. So all these taken in March. And all you've got to do is chop a bit off that size. I don't know why I've got perlite in here. I probably just had a bit of mixture already of perlite in, but just pure compost and uh, keep it wet. And you can't really go wrong. They're so easy. Dawns are so easy to take as kinds. And then I did the same with Chinese elms. I really need to get a better permanent marker because that evidently is not permanent. It's one of those cheap Chinese ones I've got. Ooh. What's this one doing? Even this one doesn't care if it's on its side. You can see its uh, buds are starting to break. That's Chinese elm. So Chinese elm are very similar to red was where they don't really mind wet feet too much. And they're the most they're, they're the most common one with bonsai in, in um, garden centres. And the garden centre always say, yeah, it's an indoor bonsai. You'll, let, you'll buy the Chinese elm, three months later, it'll be dead. And you'll be like, what happened there? Oh, it's because the garden centre told you it, it, it can go inside, which isn't, it isn't correct at all, you know? It belongs outside. They hardly bother with trees inside because there's, there's just so much hassle with scale and aphid and all sorts of things going on with it, like citrus as well, they're a nightmare when you grow them inside. But uh, yeah, if you've got Chinese elm, keep it outside. So here we go, European larch cuttings. It's drying off a bit, I'll give it another water before I finish today. Oh, I might leave it, I mean it's, good. it's gonna be frosty again tonight. 
But you can see the China, the uh, sorry, the European launch cones are doing really well. And again, as I said, in March, as they are in this sort of state, I don't know whether this one will survive, but this is the state I took them. So that the bud is just turning green, and I'll just cut that off. And that's it. It's that simple, you know. So yeah, if you've got a dawn redwood, now you know how to take the cuttings. I've got a video on YouTube about it. In June, and you do exactly the same thing, but you just cut off these bits in March before the uh, buds break. All I would do was, uh, as you can see here, is I'll scrape off from the half, from halfway point downwards, I'll scrape off all the buds, and then I'll keep a couple or a few buds on the top, as you can see here, this one's the same. I've obviously kept the buds there. And it's just, just grown again. And it'll root that easily. So yeah, if you've got Dawn Redwood, that's how you do it. Now my last video, I definitely waffled on. I've waffled on longer in this video. <laughs> so I'm going to say goodbye now, so I can actually get on with things. But uh, I still got, I've still got to get around all these as well. What's this one? So that's Yunnan Pine, or Yunnan Pine. You can see, this is what I was talking about yesterday. So it'll start dying off. What are these ones? Masons. Yeah, I need to I need to sort these out. Otherwise I'm gonna lose them all. I need to get that out of here. I don't even want to touch that, all the flowers on it. Bloody hell. What is that one? I need to get that out really. There's a lot of weeds going on in here. I need to get around it before they start flowering like these have. But yeah, that's what I'm up to today. <laughs> taking pine cuttings, taking pines out of their trays and putting them in nine centimeter pots. But here I am in this polytunnel talking about dawn redwood cuttings. Oh well, as long as it helps, you know. If you've got any questions, ask me and I'll uh, I'll bring it up in the next video.